Well, hello, everybody, Chrysalis family, Chrysalis community. Uh, it's great to have all of you with us here tonight. Um, we, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your, your schedule today to uh, hear a little bit more about what we're up to at Chrysalis in these really, really challenging times. This has been a, uh, an incredible crisis for all of us, um, our community, our country, the world. Um, and our clients and staff have certainly been impacted as well. So tonight we wanted to share a bit about what we're up to at Chrysalis um, and just to give you an idea of how you can plug in and how you can be of help. Uh, so our format tonight is gonna be a, a round table discussion. I'll uh, kick things off with some opening remarks about what's, what's going on from a, a high level standpoint. And then I'll turn it over to Molly Larson, our Vice President of Program Operations, who will tell you a bit about uh, how we have flipped our program to a virtual one. And we'll hear from Trevor Kale, who will talk about our transitional jobs businesses. And, um, and then we'll have Molly Moen talk a bit about uh, how we're navigating this situation from a communication and fundraising standpoint. Uh, now, I know a number of you have sent in some questions uh, previously, so we'll do our best to get to those tonight. You can also uh, access the chat function to uh, enter any questions that you might have for us, and we'll do our our best to get to them tonight. So I know a lot of you know that one of our most cherished traditions at Chrysalis is the bell. When a client gets a job, they ring the bell in our office. Um, but you should also know that in on the way to the bell ceremony, there's a lot of little bells that go along with that. And so I thought we'd start tonight uh, by sharing with you some uh, some anecdotal stories that we've got from our case managers, we call them employment specialists, who have been uh, working with our clients. Um, and if we could have that first slide up, please, Alex. Thank you very much. So we're, uh, I'll, I'll be making a few remarks here, but we'll be scrolling some, uh, some anecdotes here. These are texts and emails that have come in to our, our staff over the course of the, the last two weeks. So on on March 12th, Thursday, March 12th, we made the decision that we wanted to flip our program to a virtual program because we were gonna close our offices to regular client services as of the uh, Monday the 16th. And we've been remained closed for regular services since then, um, but we've done an incredible job, or not we, our staff has done an incredible job of figuring out how do we continue to serve the thousands of clients that we have through phone, voice, um, text, email, video, whatever it takes. Uh, they have gotten so ingenious in figuring this out with a technology infrastructure that hadn't been tested, we hadn't done it before, uh, but the team figured it out. And as a result, we've been able to provide great supports like some of the things that you're, you're seeing on your, your screen. And Molly Larson will be talking about that in just a moment. At the same time, our transitional jobs program, Crystalis Enterprises, has continued to operate as well. We're very conscious of the essential role that many of those businesses play in our communities. And so Trevor and his team has continued to make sure that we can provide those essential services, but also make sure that our clients are safe while they're doing that. Uh, you know, one of the, the things that I'm proudest of is that over, uh, over the last 10 days, two weeks, we've had over 1,400 client connections, 1,400 interactions between our staff and our clients. Um, and over 1,900 job leads have gone out to our clients. And so far, uh, nearly 30 of them have already found employment. Um, 30 in a normal week for us is not a busy week in terms of job placements, but I think it speaks to the resilience of our staff and our clients who still want to be able to get out there and find employment in the industries that are hiring. And in fact, uh, that last client, if you can, Alex, if you could flip back to that last slide, uh, the one about Chanel's client. Uh, that client uh, had a great opportunity with an HVAC maintenance company, um, but the story actually got better than that. Yesterday, he started work um, even faster at a grocery delivery center, a distribution center, and today he is at forklift training um, paid for by that employer. Uh, and he's gonna be making some good cash uh, during this very difficult time. So there are job opportunities out there, which we're super proud of, but even more importantly, what I'm proud of is that my staff continues to be connected to our clients. Yes, to talk about jobs, if that's the right thing to talk about, but even more importantly, just to be a friendly voice on the end of the phone or at the other side of an email, just to be that, that 
place of calm and safe harbor that uh, a lot of our clients really have come to depend on from their relationship with us. Uh, now more than ever, they, they really need it. Um, so I'd like to uh, go ahead and turn it over to Molly Larson to talk a little bit more detail about exactly how we figured out how to do all this stuff. Molly? Thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Um, so over the last two years, we've invested heavily in our tech infrastructure for our employment specialists. But responding to a pandemic was not quite the intention of all of the efforts. But it has, however, allowed us to continue to be there for our community during this time. Um, our team is delivering an incredible number of services to clients um, with staff working remotely using their laptops and they have access to an online text messaging system. In addition, the phone numbers that clients used to call them on now simply ring to their laptops. Um, as, Mark, as Mark noted, we're really proud that since moving to remote service, services um, a little more than two weeks ago, we've already engaged with nearly 1,400 clients um, in a virtual check-in or provided a service. And that includes things such as developing a resume, but doing it by phone now. Um, I couldn't be more proud of how the team has rolled up their sleeves to flip our service delivery model practically overnight, um, including having our one set offering sessions by phone, which is a service that is needed now more than ever. Um, we have not continue to uh, figure out the best way to use all of our resources, um, and that's including repurposing a lot of them during this time. So through our resource rooms, we regularly provide hygiene items to clients as they are getting ready for an interview or starting, starting a job. But before we closed our lobbies, we got um, all of the soap and hygiene products that we had and put, quickly distributed them to clients so that they would have these important items during this time. Um, in addition with our scholarship funds, while although they are still available to clients for guard card trainings or other certifications, we're now finding that the need um, that clients are seeing also includes things like paying your cell phone bill, paying your internet um, service bill. And those are things that are important to remain connected to your community in addition to doing your job search. So we're making sure that we're finding ways to cover the costs of these important services for clients. Um, and as always, we're making sure we're supporting clients with what they need. So for some right now, as Mark mentioned, a call from us, a text from us, an email from us, just reaching out to check-in um, is what the clients need and that's where they they are and they appreciate that but then for others it's continued support with the job search um, process and for a lot of clients who unfortunately have lost the position experiencing reduced hours due to COVID-19 we're also able to help them with their unemployment application which is an 11 page application um, we do it online while we have the client on the phone um, and one of the slides earlier um, that we shared uh, was a story of one of our employment specialists in the San Fernando Valley who last Friday helped a client with their unemployment application and then also helped them apply for three jobs. Um, there was also another um, story that I wanted to highlight where one of our clients um, quickly promoted to a management level position um, to offer support at a center that's providing um, COVID-19 response um, support. So that was really, really exciting in a way that our clients are also just out in the community helping during this time. Um, now, I've shared a lot about our staff because they really are amazing, um, but I also wanted to close by discussing our volunteers um, without whom we wouldn't be able to do the work that we're doing. And I know a lot of you are on the call now, so thank you so much. Um, and over the course of an average year, we train, orient, and welcome to our team hundreds of volunteers to deliver one-on-one um, -on -one services such as resumes and practice interviews to help us um, conduct our job prep classes or to help us um, sort donations so that we make sure that our resource rooms are well stocked. Um, and over the last week, more than 40 of our volunteers have stepped up to the plate and agreed to offer virtual services, which we're hoping to roll out in the coming weeks. Um, but wanted to extend an offer, if you've ever considered volunteering for Chrysalis, now would actually be a really good time to apply because when we open our doors, we're gonna have a lot of people that need us and we are really going to need all hands on deck. So if um, you have the opportunity, if you can visit changelives.org forward slash volunteer, you can learn more about all of the options there. Um, and now I'm glad to welcome Trevor Gale. Thanks, Molly. I'm so glad I figured out the unmute and video. That was my most nerve-wracking moment of my day. Um, hi, my name is Trevor, everyone, and um, thanks for joining us tonight, and thanks for supporting the work that we're doing here. 
I've been at Chrysalis for a little bit more than 12 years now, and the last few weeks have been anything but business as usual for us, as I'm sure you all can imagine. Um, the places that I've found the most comfort are the places that it actually has been a little bit business as usual in some ways. And for us, what that means is that um, we're still sending out hundreds of uh, clients to work each week, which has been um, great. Um, we're still focused on the health and safety of our crews like we always are. And uh, we're still partnering with our customers in a way to make sure that that essential work that is getting done is getting done safely and our clients are getting the opportunity to learn and, and work uh, real world jobs. Um, our clients are amazing, as you all know. Um, they're working so hard towards their personal goals and the paychecks that they're earning as part of this um, are important, especially during these trying times. Over the past two weeks, even though that um, you know, we have focused only on essential work and we have reduced some crew work sizes. We've provided paychecks to 535 of our clients, so there's still a lot of work happening. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about each one of our uh, uh, functions within Chrysalis Enterprises, just so you get a sense of what's happening there. Uh, probably our most visible program is Chrysalis Works. Um, anyone familiar with uh, areas where business improvement districts um, are in Los Angeles, um, you're probably familiar with our clean teams who are out there doing great work. Um, since we've always been a cleaning provider, um, we've always trained on safety practices and you know, proper use of protective equipment and things like that. That's always been our focus. Uh, but nonetheless, we've enhanced these services and these practices wherever we could. And um, we're actually fully stocked with personal protective equipment and cleansers and have everything that we need um, on that front. Um, some of the contracts have reduced hours. Part of that is because with the Safer at Home uh, mandate, uh, there's fewer people on the streets and there's less trash and it's also just an effort to try and keep um, only essential people going to work as possible. So that to us in Chrysalis Works equates to about a 25% reduction in the number of labor hours that we have on offer. So wherever shifts have been reduced for individuals, um, we've tried to um, work with them to find other opportunities at Chrysalis and definitely supporting them with their employment specialists. Um, so a couple of other uh, projects and works that I want to highlight that are really critical community projects. Uh, the safe storage work that we do at our bin locations um, around the city and the janitorial work that we do with the Weingart Center Association are really critical. Um, these two teams that run these, um, uh, these facilities are amazing. They're leaning on each other. They're looking out for each other's uh, health and safety. And we feel like it's uh, more important than ever that we, we do that cleaning work there. Um, for Chrysalis Roads, Chrysalis Roads, we've decided to pause. And um, to give you a little bit about Chrysalis Roads, there's about 120 individuals each week who traditionally will work in that business line. Uh, the program's a partnership with Caltrans and the Mayor's Office in the City of Los Angeles and the Butte County Office of Education. Um, but we felt uh, the need to pause that. We couldn't achieve the social distancing that we felt was essential. Um, to, to maintain safe. So we've been talking to Caltrans. We're currently trying to arrange some work from home assignments for these crews. Um, we're cautiously optimistic that something might happen there, but we don't know yet. And it's really just, um, we just made a pitch. So we're waiting to hear back on them um, about that. But nevertheless, all of our transitional employees that are working in Chrysalis Roads or we're working in Chrysalis Roads are receiving an incredible amount of support from Molly's team and employment specialists and the Rhodes team who's reached out to every single one of these um, clients and employees. Um, same thing, how are you doing? What do you need? How can I help? Um, we just heard uh, one of our crew members just got a job as a truck driver with the Port of Los Angeles. So that was exciting. And there's some good things happening uh, with that pool of folks. Um, Chrysalis Staffing, um, Chrysalis Staffing um, has actually been really busy. Um, a lot of our, you know, there's a number of essential, uh, sorry, non-essential placements and staffing that we removed, but um, the, the bulk and the majority of the work that we do in Chrysalis staffing is uh, to clean permanent supportive housing um, buildings. So a lot of our wonderful customers there, um, SRO Housing, Skid Row Housing Trust, Abode Communities and LA Family Housing, they all have a need to um, clean those facilities and we're stepping up to meet that need. Last week alone, we had an additional 12 placements at those facilities, so staffing maintains busy. On the business development side of what Chrysalis Enterprises is doing, our direct hire team has made some really impressive strides to get as much information as we can out to our client services staff and our clients themselves. We've got a list of about 50 active hiring customers that we're partnering with. Um, a lot of those um, 
customers are doing things like grocery stores, pharmacies, and delivery positions all seem to be in high demand right now and right for a lot of our clients. So we're making a lot of those connections. Um, over a two day period last week, we sent over 1900 clients uh, job leads by a text message, which is new for us and um, was actually something that the team turned on a dime, was very proud of. And um, something else they're working on is the upcoming census work and those jobs pay $25 an hour. So we're trying to um, get as many Chrysalis clients ready for those opportunities as we can. Something else that we found over the last couple of weeks is we have been reached out to by a number of city officials, county folks, other local organizations, um, asking for our help and help helping them think through problems or find ways that potentially Chrysalis and our infrastructure and talent and the, the uh, transitional workforce that we have can be utilized in the community um, to solve a problem where they're responding to COVID-19 and needing to shift their operations where we could play a role. So stay tuned for more on that. Um, lastly, I just want to say um, how seriously we take the safety of our community and our workers. Um, each moment we're thinking about this, we're trying to make sure that we, yes, absolutely keep as many job opportunities in place for our clients as we can, but obviously doing that in um, the safest manage, uh, manner for them and for the entire community of Los Angeles. Um, so that's what's happening in Crystalis Enterprises. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my friend and colleague, Molly Moen. Thanks, Trevor. Hi, everyone. Um, so after hearing about all the great work that uh, Chrysalis is doing to continue to change lives through jobs, uh, the innovation of our employment specialists and the um, and our CE crews, uh, the resilience of our clients, you may be asking, what can I do to help? And I'm here with that answer. Uh, we have established a COVID-19 relief fund uh, you can access that fund at our website, changelives.org. Uh, there's a link uh, right there at the top of the homepage. Um, and this fund will support our ongoing virtual services with a focus on direct client support, um, grocery and ga gas gift cards, assistance paying phone bills or gaining access to technology to stay connected, um, and all of those sorts of things. So we are asking for you to support us to continue allowing this great work to happen. And we want to shout out our amazing partner um, and friend at the Herb Albert Foundation. They have granted us a $25,000 challenge grant to match any gifts made to the COVID-19 relief fund through the month of April. Um, so if you give now, your gift um, and your impact will be doubled. Um, so we're really excited about that. Um, and then I want to make just one more plug um, to sign up to volunteer. Uh, as Molly Larson mentioned, we anticipate that um, as we make our way through this crisis and reopen our doors, there will be a, a really significant need for the continuation of, of Chrysalis's resources and, um, and we'll need volunteers to help us uh, meet that client need. Okay, and now I'm going to shift gears. Um, I asked you for something, and now I'm going to give an opportunity for you all to ask questions of us. So um, I will be checking the chat um, for questions in, um, that anybody wants to submit, uh, but I also wanted to let you know that there were a few questions that came up um, that folks submitted before the call, so we'll start with those. Um, and the first question um, I will send to Mark to answer, how long will Chrysalis be closed? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I, I wish I had a perfect answer for that. Um, we are following the guidelines from uh, the governor's office and from Mayor Garcetti's office. Um, obviously, we take the stay at home and spatial distancing uh, rules really, really safely. In fact, um, we, uh, other than the essential folks that are operating Trevor's businesses, the rest of us are all work, working virtually with the exception of a handful of uh, administrative folks. So we're going to stay closed as long as we need to, to preserve the health and safety of our community. Um, but you can bet we're going to be opening those doors uh, the second we possibly can. I suspect we'll probably have to do things a little bit differently, maybe with some additional spatial distancing. And, uh, you know, this, I mentioned the bell ringing ceremony where uh, the client rings the bell and there's this whole thing where we go around and shake that Uh, we want to get back to being able to see people face to face as soon as we can. Great. Thank you, Mark. All right. Um, 
Molly Larson, how can new clients access services? Yes. Um, so this is something that's really important because we know that our services <laughs> desperately needed right now. Um, so we have already revised um, our curriculum and just how our programs are delivered so that we're ready for that. We've also um, put in place electronic document signing because we still need to prioritize client confidentiality and the integrity of um, how we store our data. Um, so we are at the kind of the final phase of setting up a hotline where we can get clients um, connected to an employment specialist. So we expect that to roll out um, hopefully in the next we um i'll be it but open our doors to two clients for services great thank you molly and we're going to stick with you we have a question for um from a trained volunteer um if we are already trained who do we contact to do remote volunteer services Yes, um, that would be amazing. So our volunteer team, um, you can reach out to any of the volunteer and program coordinators at your site. Um, so you probably know who the VPC um, is the acronym that we use, um, who that is. And then I also I can see um, your name in the chat feature. So also make sure that we reach out to you um, directly for the individual that posted this question. Great. All right. Um, we have a question about folks. Um, um, supporting um, clients with um, in-kind hygiene packs, different things like that. Um, and so I will take that one. At the moment, we are not accepting um, in-kind donations at any of our centers, uh, but we do have a wish list on Amazon. And so if folks um, are able to order new items from Amazon that can be shipped to us. Uh, we have hygiene items, clothing items, and that sort of thing, which we can accept at our centers. Um, another question on volunteerism. Um, do we have a need for volunteers to help call any clients who might be feeling alone or isolated just to provide uh, extra support there? Molly? Yeah, yes, they, yeah, th sorry, I jumped in, Molly. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were coming my way. Um, yes, no, that's a really great question because I think that's one of the to train up in the protocols because we are still um, facing, you know, we're still supporting clients through a lot of pretty um, serious issues where we have to escalate them um, a certain way. Um, but if you are interested, um, fill out our online volunteer application because as we watch, you know, kind of this season that we're in right now, as we watch that continue, um, there may be a need um, that we can't anticipate yet where we might be wanting to plug people in. So if you don't mind going to um, changelives.org slash volunteer so that you can take a look at um, the application there and then maybe make a note that you're interested in that and we can see if in the future we can work something out. Great, thank you. And I also wanna let folks know that um, you can also send us emails um, with words of encouragement for our clients. Um, and those are things that we would be happy to pass along to them. It always is incredibly meaningful for folks to know that, um, that the larger Chrysalis community is thinking about them and cares about their success. So those are things that we can um, continue to pass along um, on your behalf. All right, um, so a person who um, joined, oh, sorry. So somebody asked who they send those emails to, you can send those to, um, to info at changelives.org and we will uh, make sure that we get them out to the right folks. Um, and then we had a question about, um, they joined a little bit late, they may have missed this, do we have enough um, of our personal protective equipment um, or do we need any sort of um, the do-it-yourself masks or any of that for clients or staff. Trevor, do you wanna uh, jump in on that? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> my, my daughter. Um, thanks for that. Um, actually, we're good. We, we, we stocked up really well before this and we're not, um, not deficient anything right now. Um, the one thing, you know, we always worry about it because there's a lot of things that are just you know, out of stock everywhere. So we've got a pretty amazing team of internet salutes and some, um, you know, 
pretty significant relationships with a lot of uh, personal protective equipment and supply inventory manufacturers we buy in massive bulk. Um, so we feel like we're at the top of a couple of lines for when things come in. Uh, we've got a couple of orders dropping next week for things. So we're in really good shape on all that. Great, thank you. Um, so another question on volunteering. Um, are there other uh, temporary staffing or volunteering needs that, um, that we could signal our interest um, and in training in um, from a, an existing volunteer? Absolutely. Um, please, again, just reach out to your, um, your VPC and let them know. And, um, and we'd be happy to hear about whatever resources or ideas that you have. Um, and then I think we have time for one more question. Um, how will clients know how to access online services with Chrysalis? Molly Larson. Yes, um, no, that's a great question. So a lot of um, what we see is we actually serve individuals who are in our community. So we will be posting signage at all of our sites so that they do know how to connect with us. We're also um, in constant communication with our partner agencies, whether it's a housing provider or another um, partner where um, clients are regularly interacting so that they are getting the information that they need about these services. Great. Wonderful. Okay. I think that is um, actually all of the questions that we've gotten. Um, hey, I'm back. Thanks, Molly, Molly, Trevor, and also a shout out to uh, Michael Grafweisner and Sean Bolden, two other members of our senior team. Uh, this crew has been uh, on video conferences twice a day for the last 10 days. I can tell you this is the best we've looked. Uh, this is the first time I've had to wear a collared shirt in a while. Um, so anyway, thank you all for the opportunity to dress up a little bit. Um, but in all seriousness, thank you uh, for all the words of support and encouragement uh, that many of you have sent our way in the last couple of weeks. All of us are going through a lot personally and professionally right now. And uh, those of you that are on this call are on this call because you really care and you really care about our clients, you care about our mission. And our goal is to not just get through this very difficult time that we have here over the next one or two or three or six months, whatever it is, but we know that our community is gonna need chrysalis more than ever uh, once we're past this, right? Um, Trevor's been here 12 years, I've been here about 12 years as well, and uh, as has Michael, and we remember what 2008 and 2009 was. And I think that was just a warm up compared to the challenges that our clients are going to face when it comes to employment um, beginning later this summer into the fall. So everything we're focused on at Crystals right now is making sure that we are resilient enough to be able to get us to that point so that we can do the important work that we know our community is going to uh, need us for uh, on top of everything we're doing right now. So thank you for everything that you are doing to support us. We really appreciate it. Please reach out to us. Please stay connected to us. Um, maybe we'll do another one of these um, uh, later and I'll, you know, work on the, the lighting um, in my bald spot. Uh, but anyway, uh, thanks again for joining us tonight. We hope you have a great evening and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.